It is time for our newest draft league, Low Tier Mayhem. We are removing the most powerful Pokemon in the metagame like Iron Valiant, Deoxys Speed, and Spectriar in favor of a lower powered format. Most Pokemon that are typically 13 points and above are not available to be drafted, with Pokemon like Iron Jugulus and Entei being some of the top tier options. As someone who has been very outspoken against the Generation 9 metagame and some of its most powerful threats, this is a very welcome change for this league. With the less powerful metagame, we will be seeing a lot more balanced teams and interesting team building situations, creating some great gameplay for you at home. If you are excited for this low tier draft league, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are going for 1000 subscribers this year and every subscription along the way is greatly appreciated. Let's go over the rules for this season. As we are doing low tier, we have removed most of the top tier threats and we are starting our tier list at 16 points, which includes Entei, Gudra Hisui Form, Iron Jugulus, Crocodile, and Raikou. We are allowed one Terra Captain this season, with Pokemon starting at 13 points and below being allowed to Terra, with some key bands and some especially powerful Terra Pokemon like Superior and Lucario. The Terra rules are free Terra with Terra Preview, meaning we can use any type on our Terra Captain, but we have to reveal the type to our opponent at the start of the game. This helps remove some of the in-game 50-50s that result from choosing Terra types while also giving some additional variety in the builder for Terra Captains, as the Terra type will usually be easy to narrow down to one or two in the team builder. Going into this draft, there were two key themes I was focusing on, roll compression and speed tiers. While you have heard of these concepts many times before in draft leagues and draft analysis, they're even more important when playing low tier. Drafting for rolls is a critical part of every draft strategy, and is stressed even more when doing a low tier draft. In a draft pool with lower quality Pokemon, it becomes crucial to prioritize key roles on your team so you are not left in a situation where you need to use underpowered Pokemon to perform key roles. Drafting Pokemon that perform multiple roles in a result compressing the amount of Pokemon you need to satisfy all key team building needs allows you more freedom to take up a higher variety of offensive threats and defensive checks while also opening up your Pokemon to do more on a week by week basis. Garchomp is a common victim of not being roll compressed around correctly as it is often forced into running hazards plus 3 attacks every week to account for the lack of proper rolls on a team, especially in 8 Pokemon drafts. This focus dominated my first few picks, where I drafted in a way to make sure that Pokemon were not pigeonholed into running specific roles each week, giving me flexibility in the builder. Speed is one of the biggest factors when it comes to team building in Draft League, and that is no different in low tier. The main difference in low tier, however, is what speed stats become most important. Base 100 and 110 are both very fast speed tiers in low tier, often being your fastest Pokemon compared to regular Gen 9 draft where they are often just spots along the speed tier ladder for most teams. That is not to say that these Pokemon do not exist, but without Pokemon like Greninja, Miascarada, and Cinderace to name a few, the quality of Pokemon at 110 and above become much lower in comparison to the rest of the tier list. This means that we will be spending a lot of our effort focusing on filling out our speed tiers between 70 and 100, making sure that we force our opponents into making difficult team building decisions when it comes to speed. To build our team, we got the 4th overall pick, which is a great change of pace from the last few leagues we have done, where we have picked near the back end of the first round. There are a few Pokemon I am above the rest super interested in getting, and with this pick we are sure to get one of the best options in the format. Iron Jugulus, Suicune, and Terra Iron Thorns went before us, leaving a pretty easy decision. So with our first pick, we took Crocodile at 4th overall. Crocodile is the ultimate Pokemon when it comes to roll compression, especially in the low tier environment. You get an excellent Stealth Rock Setter, which will be crucial in a format with less powerful Pokemon, as you will often require the extra damage from Hazards to claim key knockouts. You also get a Ground type, which in a format where there are a lot of powerful electric types at good prices like Electrode, Jolteon, and Regieleki, it is important to have a blanket check to these fast Pokemon who are able to get a lot of momentum in a format with limited speed options. And last, but certainly not least, we have a Pokemon with Moxie. This gives you a win condition as well, as Choice Scarf Moxie sets are very popular when using Crocodile. Skillshot also gives you the ability to run more diverse win con sets, especially against teams with reliable ground resists. All of this together in one package is a no-brainer at pick number 4, starting our draft filling key roles that we won't need to prioritize in the future, allowing us to draft the best Pokemon available more often. Low tier is home to a lot of very powerful fighting type Pokemon, which can be very threatening to my first pick Crocodile. 
prioritizing a reliable fighting resist then became priority number one, and Uxie stood out as the obvious option for a round two pick. Its functionality on this team goes further than just being a defensive complement to Crocodile, as it is another Stealth Rock user, while having a plethora of other utility options to help prevent setup sweepers, such as Encore and Thunder Wave. Offensively, this Pokemon will not provide a lot of utility, outside of threatening stabs and coverage against 4 times weak Pokemon, but Uxie as a defensive Pokemon helps open up Crocodile's role while opening up our positions for other picks. Continuing to fill key roles, Empoleon was the next pick to continue to build out this team's defensive core. Bulky Waters, while not as hard to come by as other roles, gaining a good one at this slot is important, as it continues to build on our defensive strategy with Crocodile. We also get one of the better Steel types in this low tier metagame, a typing that is very difficult to come by when it comes to quality Pokemon. Empoleon covering both of these roles gives us a defensive option that is surely to come to almost all of our games. This is also our third Stealth Rocker, which gives us a team that is basically guaranteed to get up Stealth Rocks in every matchup, which will play into this team's future outlook of bulky offense very well. Competitive is also a very good ability, allowing us to threaten even some offensive sets with agility, which is a very common way Empoleon has been used in Gen 4 OU. Empoleon is going to be another great benefactor of our roll compression focus, as we can realistically threaten this offensive set on a defensive Pokemon in a lot of matchups, creating difficult building scenarios for our opponents. After building out a very solid defensive backbone in our first three picks, it was time to focus on how we would build our team offensively. Given the slower nature of the format, bulky offense is going to have a much better time thriving as the top tier speed options are much less powerful. So for the third time since the first DLC has dropped, we have taken Ogie Dogie. There's not much to say about this Pokemon that I have not covered in a previous draft analysis though. Being a bulky fighting type with an extremely diverse coverage is a great asset to any bulky offensive team, especially with the toxic chain ability giving you the 30% chance to toxic any Pokemon on switch in. Combining this ability and the access to the move knockoff is very powerful, especially with our team's capability of ensuring Stealth Rocks get up consistently. Teams are going to have a very difficult time building out defensive cores that can handle this Pokemon consistently, allowing our next pick to clean up a lot of wins. Prioritizing a Terra Captain at this stage was the next step, as a lot of players started to add Terra Captains to their team. There was a specific Pokemon that has been in mind since the draft started, and it felt to me here in round number 5. Given that we are doing free Terra, Iron Leaves was an obvious choice for Terra Captain. The biggest weakness for Iron Leaves in Draft League is its speed stat and typing, both of which are solved for in our rule set. 104 is a very good speed tier and low tier, especially with access to booster energy on win condition sets. Is this starting to remind you of a certain Pokemon? Free Terra also gives us access to all of the types, meaning that we can switch out of the less than ideal grass psychic typing for more powerful types like Fairy, giving us the opportunity to set up on a lot of Pokemon. Getting a Pokemon that essentially amounts to Iron Valiant and low tier is insane value at round number 5, as we are basically guaranteed to have a win condition set with this Pokemon every week that is difficult for our opponents to prep for and play around. At this stage, our team is still very slow, with Iron Leaves being the only Pokemon above 100 speed. As Iron Leaves is more often than not going to be our win condition, we are going to want to prioritize getting a speed option that will see the field more often throughout the game. Turos did a great job of that role in BBR Season 6, and we are getting it here in low tier Mayhem for the same reason. 110 is a critical speed tier to have access to in low tier, as not many Pokemon near the top of the metagame are going to be able to outspeed it. This will force Pokemon that don't normally want to run Choice Scarf to be forced to consider it just to have a check to Tauros. Normal spam is also not something a lot of players will consider when drafting their team, meaning that we are going to have a lot of opportunities to spam Body Slam against teams that will not be prepared for a powerful normal type Pokemon like Tauros. As a result of sorting out our key defensive roles earlier in the draft, we are now opened up to take some interesting offensive Pokemon to our roster. Regidraga was on our mind early on in this process as its super high HP stat allows it to play very effectively into a bulky offensive outlook that this team will have. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as a whole does not have a lot of solid fairy types available to draft and that problem is more apparent in low tier without Pokemon like Clefable in the metagame. Adding a bulky dragon type allows us to take advantage of this as teams are going to be forced to cover this Pokemon neutrally if they do not have a fairy, which over the long term will make it difficult to switch into powerful Draco Meteors. 
Despite most of the tier being focused on 100 and 110 base speed, it is still important to make sure that the team had the ability to threaten the higher speed tier. Salazzle does that with 117 base speed, able to pressure some of the more frail Pokemon and fast Pokemon in the format with its poison and fire coverage. It also gives us access to toxic spikes, which will force teams with granite poisons to bring them, even if they are poor in the matchup, or run heavy duty boots on Pokemon that wouldn't otherwise want to, to prevent being caught out by a lead hazard stacking Salazzle set. We were also lacking some power on the special side of our offense, which Salazzle adds to well, punishing some common switch-ins for Crocodile and Iron Leaves. As we get into the final few picks of the draft, we are left with Pokemon that will largely be filling niche roles rather than regulars on the team every week. Mimikyu certainly fits that bill, as it's not a Pokemon that will have a ton of utility week in week out. Disguise as an ability provides good value however, and with a large move pool of utility moves, it can operate as a way to check Pokemon that we might not otherwise have the capability of. It can also threaten as a win condition with Sword Sand setup, forcing additional prep for our opponents to account for this option. We didn't get to use Ampharos when we drafted it in GBU, but the applications for Ampharos are going to be much more apparent in this low tier league. Used commonly as a defensive flying and electric resist, as well as its ability to punish U-turns with static, this Pokemon is the perfect for the type of environment that we expect in this low tier league. While our final pick of Cloth might not see the field often, for 3 points it has a lot of undeniable value. Anger Shell is an interesting ability that can be difficult to play around, while also having the ability to be a defensive check with Regenerator. Rock can often be slept on as an offensive type, and with the offensive flying types being one of the key threats to keep an eye on in this low tier season, Cloth should certainly show its worth for 3 points. With our team now complete, there are a few things that we're going to want to note. One, there is no hazard removal on this team. This is a common theme in Generation 9, as we will oftentimes see teams with no hazard removal. But why, especially with such a focus on making sure all roles are covered? Well, looking at this team, we are not particularly weak to hazard. Salazzle is the only Pokemon that takes more than standard damage from Stealth Rocks, and with both Okidogi and Salazzle, we have good counterplay for Toxic Spikes, deterring teams with cheap hazard setters from bringing them unless they have utility elsewhere in the matchup. Spike setters are still going to be very powerful against my team, but oftentimes in Generation 9, even in a low tier environment, the cost of the time to remove the hazards is almost too high in most situations, meaning that you'll be often better off using heavy duty boots and foregoing hazard removal. This team also has a very big bias towards physical attackers, with Empoleon, Regidrago, and Slazzle being the only Pokemon able to push massive damage on the special attacking side. While Pokemon like Ogidogi, Crocodile, and Iron Leaves are strong enough to push past common physically defensive walls, there is still a likelihood that we will run into a defensive wall that is able to control our team consistently. These Pokemon are few and far between in low tier however, so it is unlikely to be a major concern. Enough waffling about the team, let's get into our schedule. The schedule is on screen now and it is super exciting. A lot of great matchups against a lot of great players, some who I've had the opportunity to play against before, and some who I haven't yet, so a lot of things to look forward to this season from a scheduling perspective. But that is going to be the end of the draft analysis for the low tier mayhem league as i said i am super excited to be a part of this if you have not subscribed already make sure you do to keep up with all of the draft league content on this channel as well as the ltm draft videos that go up every week also make sure to join the ltm discord that link is in the description to stay up to date with all the results on this league and get ping notifications every time my videos go live all of the coaches are also in the description down below, so make sure you check out my opponents and everyone else over the course of the season, because this is going to be a great, great season that I am super excited for. So that is all I have for today. I will see you next time, and as always, have a wonderful day.